Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Jim Cavanaugh. I'm Douglas County Commissioner and Chair of the Board of Commissioners uh, Administrative Services Committee. Uh, we're holding this hearing uh, today, um, and I think you should have an agenda. If not, they're available um, at the front door. I'm joined by uh, my colleague, uh, County Commissioner uh, Claire Duda, and elected officials, uh, Clerk of the District Court John Friend, and Douglas County Public Defender Tom Riley. Uh, we are anticipating the imminent arrival of Douglas County Treasurer John Ewing, his Chief Deputy Tim Cavanaugh is here uh, in his stead and saving him a seat. Uh, I want to thank all the elected officials uh, for taking time out of their day uh, and joining us uh, on this uh, important. Oh, there's uh, Douglas County Treasurer John Ewing. John, would you come down, please? We've <clears throat> saved a, a ringside seat for you. Uh, we have a variety of um, Douglas County uh, department directors and staff, and I would ask the department directors to join us here with our county staff so that as we have questions, we don't have to pull you out of the uh, audience. Directors, you know who you are. Please come down if you're a director. Even if you're a director for only another few hours, please join us. Um, Thank you. The um, Douglas County Board, as you're probably aware, is entertaining uh, ideas regarding um, a juvenile justice center, um, Douglas County Juvenile Court House, uh, possible changes in our um, Douglas County Youth Center, uh, and um, acquisition has underway. I think we closed today actually on one of the pieces of uh, property uh, directly across the street south of the uh, complex that we're in um, that was f formerly occupied by OHA. We own an adjacent property and you're going to see that here in a, in a minute. Um, but before I get started, I've been reminded by our clerk comptroller, Dan Esch, Douglas County clerk comptroller. Thank you. And He's the record keeper of Douglas County. So um, I have, we have another director that just walked in. So if you'd come down and join your colleagues, that would be great. Um, there's an open meetings act. And this is important because this is an open meetings and there can't be too many of those on public pro uh, projects. Posted on the back wall. And uh, on this particular project, um, we are bending over backwards to have open meetings on this to discuss the proposal, alternatives to the proposal. I think uh, nothing can be better than shining uh, sunlight on uh, public process that could involve $120 million. So Open Meetings Act is there and we're in compliance with that. Uh, there are copies of the agenda for this meeting available where you come in. And uh, we have um, copies of the handouts that may be circulated in the course of this meeting uh, will be available, um, if not here, on the clerk comptroller's website that records these meetings. You'll also be able to see, I believe, video of the meeting. And they do produce um, minutes of the meeting in hard copy form for People like me who still read things on paper. Uh, I just love to have things in my hand uh, to, to peruse. Um, this is the third in a series of these uh, hearings that we've held. The first uh, entertained the needs uh, space-wise and program-wise and future-wise of the Douglas County Public Defender and the Douglas County Attorney. And, uh, Douglas County Attorney Don Klein and Douglas County Public Defender Tom uh, Riley testified at that and gave us an outline of what their space needs were uh, and what they currently have. Um, the second focused on the Douglas County Youth Center at 42nd and Woolworth on the Midtown Douglas County campus that we own. Um, and that was last week. 
in this hearing, and we have a subsequent follow-up hearing scheduled for um, August 15th at 2 p.m., um, are dealing with the needs of the Douglas County Juvenile Court. And so on that date, uh, we're going to hear directly from the Douglas County Juvenile Court bench, the judges. Uh, today, we're going to deal with the more spatial aspects of that, and we're going to hear from uh, Public Property, who uh, is represented by uh, Mr. Dave Peterson, who's the Public Property Project Coordinator, and Dave is going to present to us kind of a, an overview of where we are, and then we'll, we'll drill down on just this component dealing with the Douglas County Juvenile Court. So Dave, if you could take the podium and we would start with your presentation, we'd appreciate it. Um, and the clerk has also asked me to have everyone give their name, and in your case, title, uh, when they begin their testimony. coordinator for uh, public properties so um, as Jimmy asked uh, for us to give a little presentation um, as C uh, Commissioner Kavanaugh said you know today is a closing day Gary Leahy which is our director he would be here but he's at a, a closing for the property for uh, the uh, current existing OHA but um, um, what uh, what we're here to, today to talk about is square footage that some of our departments are currently existing, uh, are currently in, and with the new square footages that they'll be using when they go to if uh, to a new office building if uh, when that comes about. So um, there has been a change, I believe, that we want to mention today of. Uh, some of our square footages that we currently can I <clears throat> go to up here um, they're a lot smaller I will try to make this as big as we possibly can up there um, but as you can currently see county attorney's office currently um, is sitting at about 23,000 square feet. Um, Tom Riley's department, public defenders, is uh, at about 14,860. The Douglas County Juvenile Probation across the street in the Key Line building, they currently are on three floors over there. They are on three, four, and six, and they are currently occupying about 15,300 square feet. The, uh, the new change is the juvenile uh, assessment center will not be moving down they they made the decision that maybe it's best that they stay at their current location which they are in the, what we call the Douglas County Midtown office building on 40th and Pacific Street area and then the juvenile county court system is occupying right now about 11,798 pretty close to the 12,000 and then I'm sorry, Dave. Yes. I'm just going to stop you there. Yep. Are we working off of the same document oh, that you, you know what? handed the out to us? Numbers may be. You're, yeah. right, you're right, Jimmy. The numbers may be different here. Let's try this one. That's that's what Jesus currently. There's our numbers. Excuse me. Is that the right set? St no, this is the, still the wrong 24th. One? When did you put the other one on here? Can I put it on the flash flash drive back up there? I don't think you got that one on here. All right. While we uh, wait for that, um, as you came in, you would have seen, There's in addition to the agenda, there. I believe copies of the document that we're trying to bring up here it is um, that's headed Douglas County Justice Center 8218 existing square footage and it's broken into three 
columns, uh, the existing, where we are today, um, the cumulative of that kind of a running total running down the middle column, and then a 20% future growth square footage anticipating that, uh, as I think is wise, uh, that government and these offices will need more space going forward. As a matter of fact, some of them need more space now. Uh, I know from personal experience, having been in the courts, having been in the county attorney, having been in the public defenders, how cramped and inadequate their space are, uh, their current spaces are, and um, they lack everything from conference rooms to uh, windows. And so the 20% is a bare minimum, I think, of what we would uh, anticipate in terms of uh, future growth if we're putting them in a new structure. So, Dave. Yeah. Let's start again. All right. So the the square footages are pretty much the same. What I you know what I said. Twenty three thousand for the county attorneys, the public defenders, Tom Riley's department, seen about fourteen eight sixty, and then uh, juvenile probations at, still at fifteen three. The jack, the jack is, as, as I think I said, is what we talked about up in our office earlier, is not going to be part of the move. They will stay where they're currently at. And then the uh, juvenile courts, uh, juvenile division, uh, they're up on the sixth floor of the current county courthouse, and they're in about 13,600 square feet. So, okay. Dave, this number 13,600 for yep. the sixth floor does that include the court administrators and and my office up there that that, that includes court. the where All the, the courtrooms yes yes just the courtrooms just well this th if you're looking at yeah it'd be the the six current courtrooms uh they currently we're estimating they're a little over 2,000 square feet and then it also um the that the 1800 would be the possible the addition of another courtroom that that's the new courtroom that's currently up there right. so so yeah if we anticipate moving clerk of the district court and the court administrators yeah. there they, these numbers are not reflected in the space that right. we currently correct. use correct correct okay. correct thank you so you know again to drill down on what we're talking about here today dave which is basically the juvenile courts needs right they have a couple three components on here they have the douglas county juvenile probation 15,300 square feet that we lease across the street in the key line building correct they have the douglas county juvenile assessment center which we own 5,100 square feet on right. the midtown campus right and we have the douglas county courts themselves uh, and their support staff on the sixth floor of the old courthouse. And taking the preliminary indications from the court that they they don't think that moving the juvenile assessment center uh, into a proposed juvenile courthouse would be something that they would want, we're dealing with the Douglas County Juvenile Probation and the Douglas County Juvenile Court Systems, uh, which currently are about 29,000 square feet, 28,9. Yep. Um, and we're looking at, with a 20% growth factor in, going to a 34,680 square foot, uh, if you take the, the numbers for them from the third column. Sure. Okay. Um, we have talked about, you know, we're currently in a construction project now out at the... Uh, West Maple campus that we own mm -hmm. of an older building that was the Fitzgerald Veterans Home. Um, and it's a refurbishment. So we take an existing structure and we basically take it down to the studs and we refurbish it. And I think that you looked into that and we're putting total, total. 14, 14,700,000 700, into that. And that's not all construction. Some of that is equipment and furnishings and whatever. Yeah. Um, I don't think you have for us today a square footage cost on that, but it would be good if we could find and we, that. And we talked, and yeah, and I tried to get that before this started, and, and Jeff McGill, which is 
the project coordinator for, or the project manager for that he's you know uh currently out there at that location at a construction meeting he would get that number for us on what it's going to cost what the cost per square footage is sure. for that project out there and you know we'll get around to that a little more at the end when sure. we talk about the update but you know that's kind of uh, another alternative that we could employ sure. which is take an existing structure and take for instance the lawyer component of this page and the building that we're in and the courthouse is surrounded by lawyers buildings mm -hmm. i know because i spent 25 years in one of them and they're still full of lawyers you can't get rid of them mm -hmm. uh and and refurbish it rather than new construction i think um when hdr copying the, the chin study, which is this study available to everyone upstairs on the 12th floor at the, uh, the uh, uh, Omaha Douglas Public Building Commission, um, estimated uh, putting all of these into um, pretty much one complex of structures um, that would come to about 130,000 square feet of new construction. Um, and we've looked at new construction costs and yardsticks for that. And here's where your number is going to be real key to us. And mm -hmm. When we come back on the 15th, it'll be important that you have that. Okay. The new construction numbers that we get in the industry are $500 a square feet, foot. Um, I know from having been in an office that was redone twice in the 25 years that, that I was there, that the refurbishing costs are significantly under $500 a square foot new construction. So that differential is what we're working towards. I mean, we're looking at alternatives. We're not really looking at more expensive alternatives. You understand? We're, we're looking at, right. okay, if we did it this way and we did it that way, um, what could that be? Uh, but currently, the $100 29,000 uh, square foot chin HDR price tag um, in this study was in its final version 106 million plus but now in the HDR proposal which we don't have in a public document yet it's 120 million uh, and so that's kind of the compared to what number that we're working towards and We'd appreciate it if public property could help us find out, and then the fits right is a good comparison. Right, we'll get that. Yeah, and it's it's you know as we'll be able to go, you know, project cost at fourteen mil seven hundred thousand, and then the because the only difference out there at the Fitzgerald home is there's a difference between gross remodel what we're doing and net remodel what we're doing because there is some remodel work going to be done for future use out there that will not be occupied, but we will be able to get you that that per square foot on uh, renovation construction cost out there. Okay. Um, that's very helpful. I mean, I think that we're talking about uh, real things and real numbers here in public. And I think it's important for people to see that if we, you know, did all of this and we did the upgrade of the um, folks' uh, property, um, that it would come to, including the youth center, which doesn't really change from its current footprint, um, to about 176,000 square feet. Is that correct? If yeah. I'm reading that third use, column, numbers on there. That that's the yeah, that's the square footage. Okay. Well, very good. If we did that with um, the $500 a square foot compared to whatever the refurbishment square foot um, um, yardstick would be. That would be a very important comparison that yeah. we would like to have. Okay. Um, the second page that you have, you're going to address that, Douglas County yeah. Justice Center. As you can see, um, the square footage that we currently have across the street from this building um, is um, the 408 building where our current dot com location is at. Um, it has uh, 408 South 18th. It has approximately 32,000 one 
180 square feet. And that's, they are on a first, full, first floor, second floor, third floor, and a fourth floor of office space. Fifth floor is more, more or less a, a storage area over there for old, older equipment that they have and some you know, maintenance equipment. Uh, lower level basement is mostly utilities. Um, and then the, the uh, acquired building on the corner of the uh, Omaha Housing Authority building at 1805 Harney Street has a square footage of 17,136. And that's 27,000, you mean? 27,136. That's not coming up here on the screen for some reason, is yeah. it? Is that what you got? Let me see if I can make that as big as possible. Because it's a, that's so that there's the numbers there is, is you can see okay. so grand total of about fifty nine thousand three three sixteen for the two existing buildings across the street that that we will have okay now in addition to um, dot coms thirty two thousand one hundred and eighty yes. in four hundred eight south eighteenth I believe you mentioned they also have. Um, is they, it 8,000 8, square feet? They're, they're, they do. They're in, located in the lower level of the city county building, uh, which we call C level. They have a computer, their computer lab area down there, and it's in approximately uh, 8,000 square feet. Okay. I think is what they have down there. And if you added that, it's about 67,316 square feet total in that okay. column, which the only reason I point that out is that if you add the um, space that the juvenile probation office currently occupies in the space that the Douglas County Juvenile Court currently occupies, it's almost exactly the same. It's 66,760. So the space that we own over there right now is equivalent to the space that the court occupies right now. And, you know, one option would be take that footprint, which obviously is adequate for current needs, and build up from there another 20% uh, with just court facilities, courtrooms, probation, uh, conference rooms, client rooms, secure rooms, and make that, that footprint contain everything that we're talking about in terms of a juvenile courthouse. So, thank you, mm -hmm. Commissioner. Any questions? Oh, I, I'll let this be your show, but I would not necessarily concur that they have plenty of space up on the sixth floor today. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, we're cramming court Nobody rooms. said they did. You just said they have adequate space on no, the sixth floor. No, I said floor. they have that space. Don't. I'm sorry if I left you that impression. Uh, okay. I would say Fine. that's the space they're in. I don't think it's adequate. Okay, very good. Thank you. Um, the idea that I think is valid is that we build a juvenile courthouse and that it house the juvenile courts and probation at least with the room that we talked about for expansion here. That's why there's a 20% future growth estimate on here. With regards to just the juvenile courthouse, I would say that the legislature is already talking about both 7th and 8th judges coming this way, and 20% and growth really probably won't be adequate to meet the needs of just what we see coming already mm -hmm. for that. Right. And, you know, that's certainly a very valid point. We needed to start someplace. And so 20% growth, 25% growth, 30% growth. We were predicating that on the square footage estimates that we actually received in the first hearing, I think you were there, from the public defender and the county attorney. So, you know, replicating those with the court system, replicating those with, with them, they may vary. And one of the reasons that we have you know, specific stakeholders giving specific testimony is exactly that. But this document in the process is based on what stakeholders have already told us that their future expansion needs. And theirs may change. I mean, I mean th that's an evolving thing. But that's a 20% number. It doesn't mean that it's the final number. It's a number. Anything else from him? 
No. Thanks, Dave. Yep. Um, at this point, and I, I want to caution everybody, we're on a tight schedule here today because of other commitments that the commissioners have afterwards uh, and others, I believe. Um, we would like to entertain public input. I'm going to limit people to uh, a reasonably short time. I'm not going to put a stopwatch on anybody. Normally, we would put lights up here, green, yellow, and red. Um, that would be five minutes, I believe. Is that right? Five sometimes minutes? we do three, sometimes five. Okay. So sometimes three, sometimes five. But um, we'd ask you to keep it as short as possible, and, uh, and I'd ask the public to be heard on this. Hello, my name is Constance Myrendorf. I'm a private citizen and volunteer, known to many of you. Um, what I'm going to share with you is the result of the work of volunteers. Um, no public monies or private monies have been expended for this um, effort. Uh, many of the numbers that you see uh, on the chart here are the ones that you were just uh, given. The existing square footage for the county attorney and public defender, uh, 37,860 square feet. Oh, I'm going to hit for you. Wait, no, I'm going to make this better for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Need a little coaching. Um, we took uh, the public defender and the county attorney's words that they needed mo even more space at the uh, administrative services meeting, I believe on uh, July 10th, uh, that they needed as much as 55,000 square feet. So w what you have is three columns on the, r on the left side, um, the existing square footage. The center proposal is the Chin study, the $120 million proposal, and on the right is our alternative. Um, so we see the county attorney and public defender all going into one building by themselves apart from the tower proposal. Juvenile probation and the juvenile courtrooms, yes, we took into consideration that eight have been proposed and our number is 18,876 uh, square feet for the juvenile courtrooms. That includes the eight proposed um, courtrooms plus 20%. So the second component here is 37,236 square feet, and we believe we can accomplish that in the space that we've just, uh, we've just talked about, the OHA building and the dot-com building that um, is behind it. If you took those two spaces, you wouldn't have to touch the Perrin building. You could build up and certainly accommodate that 37,236 square feet. Juvenile assessment um, is remaining the same. I, I think we had slightly different numbers at 5,100 square feet. We didn't, uh, we didn't put in any additional uh, square footage there. We kept the youth center uh, at 90,000 square feet. It's not new, but certainly renovating that space would be much, much less costly than uh, building a new juvenile center downtown, which, as the Chin study points out, is not a desirable location. What we did include is uh, the dot-com building and um, added new space for it too. If we take the second building behind Omaha Housing Authority, demolish it and put up a tower, we have to put dot-com someplace. So we're hoping that uh, it will be a part of that building or it, it could be uh, a part of an alternative that we see. The square footage that you see at the bottom <coughs> Is, um, includes the 90,000 for the um, youth center. So really the net uh, number here should be 144,856 square feet. Okay, let me go to the next slide. So then we have a preliminary proposal uh, to accommodate these needs. The attorneys would uh, go here to uh, what is the AIM building I believe there are 90,000 square feet plus in the AIM building, so that could clearly accommodate all of the uh, attorneys, and uh, many attorneys are there already. Um, we would 
we might have space left over that we could lease out, who knows? Um, it's conceivable that .com could go there, I don't know. But this is the, um, the AIM building and there would be a Skyway built to the, right across to the parking ramp. Many of the attorneys who serve the county already uh, are parking in that parking ramp. They can go downstairs and under uh, the building and up over to the courtroom. So that's not a change for, for some of them. The, um, court, um, the courts and the juvenile probation would be housed in the space that is now Omaha Housing Th Authority and the uh, dot com building right here. So rather than 10 stories, we'd have six stories at a considerable savings to the taxpayers and to the county. Again, a skywalk to the city county building because both the county attorney and the public defender said that that was something that was necessary for them. <coughs> and this is just an overview with, with the skywalks. That's my presentation. Can I just ask you a couple yes. of questions? Thank you. And, and thanks for this. I mean, um, it's impressive that private citizens, I presume no tax dollars were used in the preparation of this. Um, have taken the time and the effort and their skills to produce something like this. The blue structure there, which is the juvenile courthouse, housing courts and probation and administration of the courts, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And, and what's the anticipated square footage on that building? Um, it would be 37,236, according to this. Um, that's just our guesstimate. It right. could be more. Right. And that fits on the footprint that we currently own. There's no right. necessity for condemnation or eminent domain of any uh, private property. Correct. Okay. So those are, those are two large buildings, um, 59,000 square feet currently, and uh, certainly this would fit in, in that footprint. Okay. Um, and then the lawyers that were anticipated to occupy, was it five stories of the, of the uh, HDR proposal? Correct. Uh, would go into the eight-story AIM building, um, and they had square footage of? The building itself is uh, over 90,000 square feet, but um, we're anticipating 55,000 square feet for the attorneys. That's what they asked. I'm, I'm sorry, how many square feet? 55,000. 55, um, so the balance of square footage in there, we're currently using, looks like 40,000 square feet for uh, dot com. Could be used for dot com or could be used for other uh, offices that are currently in this building. And Correct, and I, I leave that to the architects and the engineers. Okay. Um, and I, I would imagine that if we did this scaled back version of the uh, tower proposed by HDR, um, that the cost would be significantly less. It, it, it appears also that there's no juvenile detention uh, building adjacent no. to this. No, our, our thinking is that the facility that exists has 90,000 square feet. It has tremendous potential for a campus-like setting, a greenery. Um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a plan that's coming forward. We're not quite there yet. Okay. And um, it does not anticipate a, I think it was a four or five story parking garage facility that the HDR study No, proposed. there is visitor parking uh, currently behind the, uh, um, behind this, behind the OHA and uh, dot com, and uh, there is a park. There's a two-level parking ramp that is adjacent to the AIM building. So there's a, a I believe, about a hundred parking spaces uh, adjacent currently to the AIM building. Okay. And uh, you don't have to answer if you don't know, but the HDR proposal for the all-in um, tower juvenile detention parking garage was 120 million. If this component here, um, the blue and the, the blue, I guess, mm -hmm. first, 
were to be built to house the courts in their offices. Do you have a, an idea of what that would be cost-wise? A new, um, new, new construction for the for this building, thirty-seven thousand square feet. If you were talking about five hundred dollars a square foot, what does that work out to? Who's okay. got there? Well, I uh, <laughs> I'm not a mathematician, but I can certainly come up with that. Um, the bottom line on this is not to spend as much as we can, but spend what we need, um, and. That would be eighteen and a half million dollars. Well, that's a far cry from one hundred and six million, I would right. say. Um, and again, I, I really appreciate you doing this on your own time and your own dime. Uh, and thank you. We are absolutely interested in alternatives like this, and if if there's more that can be added more detail, more cost estimates, whatever, uh, you'd certainly be welcome back uh, in future hearings to uh, present those. But this is a great alternative to what has been proposed at $120 million and at a fraction of the cost we can do. Two of the big things that we need to do. So thank you very much. I, I'd just like to ask, there's one, excuse me, sir. I'd just like to ask one, there's one other, I believe, testifier here that I know is a little pressed for time. I thought I saw Judge McDermott uh, come in a bit ago. Yes. Uh, could we just sure. have the judge, I, yeah. having dealt with judges all my life, I know that none of them uh, are, are enormously patient at waiting. Uh, and I appreciate you taking your time, having uh, a busy schedule. So. Please give well, us your now name. let's correct the record, Mr. Kavanaugh. I'm retired. Oh, you I give just us your name? retired in January, so I don't have that horribly busy schedule that your you're Honor, giving me credit could for. Could you give us your name, please? Pat McDermott. I am a retired judge of the 5th Judicial District. I sat at the county court level. I did juvenile cases for that entire 20-year period. I've been a lawyer for 44 years. I have been involved in juvenile cases for the entire 44 years. I just completed my tenure as a director of the National Council of Juvenile and Family Court Judges. Uh, for the last five years, I've sat on that board of directors. For those of you not familiar with that organization, it is one that's mission is to train the judges who do juvenile law. Uh, I'm not going to be throwing a whole lot of square footage at you because, like Mr. Kavanaugh, I know never let a lawyer do math. That's why we went to law <laughs> school and didn't become doctors and engineers. What I am most concerned about is what I see missing, not what I see already discussed. At the National Council, we have done studies all over the country with the aim of creating family-friendly courts. We just adopted a resolution concerning recommending as a best practice family-centered courtrooms. And what that jargon means is that in your planning, you need to provide for secured meeting rooms, many of the juvenile cases under neglect dependency uh, have a domestic violence component in them. We need to have safe places for the family waiting to go into court to be with their attorney and not be exposed to aggressors in their life. Because one thing we know in juvenile law is that trauma is probably the main driver of juvenile misbehavior, whether it's juvenile justice, acting out in truancy, or being a victim of bona fide abuse neglect. All of those are trauma-inducing, and trauma is a driver of misbehavior. So you need to build kid-friendly spaces that are inviting, and I would hope that you would, in your planning process, consult with the American Academy of Pediatricians, who have been trying to design their offices for years to make it kid-friendly because children coming to the doctor are often nervous and scared. So they try to do things that make it 
easy. I started my legal career in the separate juvenile court of Douglas County, Nebraska for four years as a public defender. Uh, I then practiced out in western Nebraska, but when I was appointed back to the county bench, I did between 450 and 500 juvenile cases a year in Columbus, Schuyler, and Wahoo. When Judge McGrath was ill, you, some of you are old enough to remember Judge McGrath, myself and a colleague, uh, the late Judge Rouse, came in here and basically did his docket. I would come two days a week, one week, and then three days a week. The next week, my colleagues were covering uh, my responsibilities in the 5th District. So I, I go back to the days of Joe Moylan and Colleen Buckley, the original two that, that designed this juvenile court. But you got an opportunity here when you're building something new to build in the latest neuroscience, the latest sociology about how you make these cases go better, quicker, and safer. I don't see any reason to move your juvenile detention facility. I think it's a good campus. It could be remodeled. It has an essential thing that I don't see in this plan either. Poverty is a barrier. Parking downtown is expensive for families that are below the poverty line. So unless you can make provision for some kind of free parking for these families, I think you do a great disservice. For years, I was guilty of it. I designed one courtroom myself. We build courtrooms and courthouses for the convenience of judges and lawyers. I was one of the pampered judges for 20 years. My staff couldn't do enough to make my life easy. My county commissioners were wonderful at taking care of me. We're a little tougher in that. All a judge really needs is a place to think and a computer to look up the law. We don't need a whole lot more to really effectively do our jobs. But the people we serve do need that space, so I would hope that if you're going to throw out $120 million of taxpayer money, but one of the things you do is keep always foremost in your mind the people that you serve with the facility. Build something for them so that we can be an efficient and compassionate deliverer of juvenile justice in the state of Nebraska. I can answer questions. I can't do math. Thank you, Judge. <laughs> Commissioner? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, now time is becoming a factor, so I'm going to start limiting folks to maybe a minute or so. Sir, would you give us your name, please? Why would I get only a minute and he got five minutes? Okay, that's 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually glad, Commissioner Kavanaugh, you let Judge McDermott go first. I'm Tim Rouse, and I, I live downtown. Um, Two or three things. The first one is um, I read the World Herald, I watch television, and I don't have much information about this project, which feels to me as a citizen like it's a done deal anyway, so it doesn't make any difference what I think. And most of the people I talk to haven't even heard about the project, and when I tell them they think it's a done deal. So that's the first problem with this project. So I'm going to make a couple of comments which may be inaccurate because I don't have adequate information. So. First, I agree with the judge that the juvenile detention system, should, detention center should stay where it is. After all, um, that's where the assessment center is. It's on the same campus. So why would you assess them on that campus and bring them downtown to de be detained? And second, downtown is an intimidating place regardless of whether it's new or old. So leave them somewhere where it's a pleasant facility. I've been on that campus for months at different times in my life. It's a pleasant place to be. Now, detention's not pleasant, period, but being in a tall structure that's brand new is very intimidating. And again, if you think about what the judge said, uh, we're talking in many cases about poor people, about homes that have been disrupted, in some cases, maybe many cases, by violence. And you're going to take kids from those situations and you're going to bring them downtown. You're going to put them in places that are unfamiliar with a lot of adults around who are telling them what to do and where to go in a brand new building. It just doesn't make any sense. Uh, I would think that you want 
Judge McDermott to be on your committee or your planning people, and I'd invite you to get the Project Harmony people involved. The Project Harmony people in the city know more about what children in the juvenile system need to have than HDR or anybody around this table. I bet you money. And that's who ought to be designing the juvenile facility. I don't have any question about the need or the square foot, but I agree with the judge, you're going about it wrong. And take care to take to do what's needed for these young children or the not quite um, juvenile, not quite teenage children. And I agree with the predecessor that as a citizen, I think lease space is a whole bunch better than new buildings for a couple reasons. And ch cheaper is not the main reason. The biggest reason is it's a better way to use space in downtown Omaha. It says something to the citizens of Omaha about the fact that you're caring about my tax dollars. And in fact, you can end up with space which is much more attractive at a lower price than you can with brand new steel and glass buildings. And it's less expensive. Thank you, sir. Next. Hello, thank you for the opportunity uh, to speak. Uh, my name is David Corbin. I'm the oh, 1002 North 49th Street. I'm the chair of the Nebraska Sierra Club. Uh, we have about 3,000 members in the state, and about half of those are in Douglas County. Uh, I have questions as well, but first I want to say uh, it doesn't make sense to tear down beautiful buildings that end up in landfills. We want to keep landfills uh, lasting as long as they can. Second, uh, eminent domain is not something that Sierra Club favors on projects like this. Third, uh, about parking. Uh, I haven't seen anything about what the parking costs, but the last time I looked, when you build a parking garage, the average cost per parking space is fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. That's not where transportation is going in the future. Lincoln is experimenting with autonomous electric buses. We're talking about more transit, a uh, mass transit in the city. Some people are talking about streetcars, and younger generations are. We're going to have. Uh, they're taking Ubers. Many of the students that I've taught at Creighton and UNO now uh, don't even bother to get a, a, a driver's license till later on in life. So what we need to do is, uh, I'd like to know what the cost of the parking garage is. I think that's a terrible idea, uh, and to have more uh, downtown and to look at what we're doing with planning in the county and the city with future transportation and try to tie that in to this particular project. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, um, my name is Christine Henningsen. I direct a project called Nebraska Youth Advocates, which is out of UNL's Center on Children, Families, and the Law. Um, I'm also a resident of Douglas County, 5113 Franklin Street. Um, I just wanted to speak briefly, um, echo the words of Judge McDermott that through all the strategic planning, we need to keep the needs of our families and children at, at the forefront. Um, and I appreciate the, the public hearings that we're having on this. I do want to caution that breaking it up in this piecemeal fa fashion does tend to negate one of the key components of the Chin study, that these are all uh, co-located co services, which are best practices for families. Um, and also that we need to, um, we do need the space. It's an amazing opportunity to better serve our families, but I don't want to lose sight of that co-location and giving families the ability to access services all in one place. Um, I also would respectfully disagree about the need to um, address our juvenile detention facility um, while that is on a campus-like setting. Um, the, facility itself is not trauma-informed or in line with best practices. There's not access to natural light um, or anything like that. Children are transported to court um, every day to and from. It also makes it difficult as a public defender to visit your clients when they are off campus. Uh, so I just want to say as we go forward that we keep the vision of keeping the, the campus facility being interrelated, co-located facilities for families and youth. Thank you. Thanks. 
My name is Dominique Morgan. I'm the National Director of Black and Pink, and we are the largest prison abolitionist organization in the United States. Uh, I've been born and raised here in Omaha. I live at 3314 North 66th Street. Um, I'm also an adolescent health educator at Charles Drew Health Center. So I'm wearing a couple of hats as I speak right now. But my biggest concern slash issue is that the whole time we've talked about square footage and even like the community advocates, I think people are being very propelled by property taxes and space and not talking about the youth that we are trying to support and the families that are affected by what this work should be. Uh, also, as I've read about this process and those who have been involved in this process for a system that disproportionately affects people of color, the amount of people of color involved in decision making is really sad to me. Um, even the time that we're having these meetings for someone who really is being affected, a family who's involved in this system, for them to have their voice at the table today most likely would not be able to do that because they're working or they're in court with their children. Um, I'm, I'm just deeply concerned about how this process is moving. I think one of the only things I could concur with with folks who have spoke before me is that this feels like it's a already done deal. It just depends on where it's going to be and when it's going to happen. So the reformist in me really wants to uplift the fact that the staff that we have now who are working with these young folks are inadequately trained to really be effective. Um, adding more space, even adding more staff, doesn't negate the fact that you have a caseworker with 100 kids on their caseload, um, judges and lawyers who have never been in the communities of the young folks that they are bestowing justice upon, um, and even the organizations, I understand Inclusive Communities has been doing some training of staff members. Inclusive Communities does biases and training in high schools. How are they equipped to work with folks who navigate the justice system? Um, so I really would push as we go through this, and I will hold myself accountable to being involved, to uplift the conversation about training. So no matter what we do next, we need to make sure folks are doing good work. And I think even with the new building, if we continue with the same status quo, the work is still going to be subpar. We'll just have more folks doing subpar work. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm going to have to agree with that gentleman. I'm going to take a little bit different approach because I've spoke before and I sent you an email for inclusion. You know, before we build something. Name, please. Could you give me Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Larry Storer, S-C-O-R-E-R, -E uh, Omaha. Before we build something, we need to really get down to a lot of other questions as to why we need the space that we need. Uh, in that process, you need to ask, well, who's saying we need that space? There's a lot of talk over the last two years that I've been snooping around board meetings about uh, best practices, uh, community partners, foundations. We hired a judge from Pennsylvania to come in to tell the state how to improve juvenile justice, how to find children that need help. Uh, we hired people to come into the Douglas County and, and run a program called Omaha Youth Success slash OPS. And some of the partners' names in that we never hear about but the, most of them were outside organizations. Uh, Terra Luna was one of them. I won't mention the other one because it's a very popular local place. But what happened here was distributed in data form on a handout last week. This, this stack of papers, or two stack of papers, was all about what they've done with the kids in the Juvenile Justice Center and Assessment Center over the last few years, studying who it is, why they're there, how long they were there, how long they were expelled from school, and coming up with a disparity thing to show you in green and blue and white and black how disparity is. But why weren't they studying the cause of the problems? Why weren't they hiring local people like this gentleman to help us keep the kids busy instead of in jail? Those, these outside organizations have contracts with the city council, uh, the Douglas County Board, and the state of Nebraska. 
I read the other day that... Larry, I'm going to have to ask you to wrap it up here. We're okay. really tight on I'll that. wrap it up with this. I read the other day that even the state Supreme Court gets money from some of these foundations and outside partners. So I'd like the people of Omaha to wake up and ask why you need something better than what's over there right now. And if it's because of outside programs, you maybe ought to scrap it. Thank you. Yeah. We've got time for maybe one or two more, and then we're going to switch to our final item and uh, wrap it up. Thank you. Yes, my name is Kathy Bigsby Moore. I'm a citizen living at 219 South 167th Street. And I am here, I apologize, I was not able to attend the meeting dealing with the youth center. Um, I'm here to say that I completely acknowledge the need for more juvenile court space and other space um, that currently addresses our juvenile court issues. Um, I think that there is a need for significant improvements at the Douglas County Youth Center. I spent 25 years doing juvenile justice advocacy work and was around when the Youth Center was being proposed. And I think there are some significant deficiencies in the design of the Youth Center. Um, I do agree that um, it is in a more campus-like location and there is tremendous benefit from retaining that location, the parking access, et cetera. Um, but as we go forward, um, I agree with the people who've spoken um, immediately before me that I hope the emphasis is on kid-friendly, family-friendly, trauma-informed <coughs> care, and that we at least weigh that equally to square footage and costs. Thank you for this hearing opportunity, and I hope there continues to be even more opportunity for this kind of input. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you again, Kathy. Thanks. <coughs> Hello, my name is Tyler Wilson, and I'm a resident here in Omaha in District 1. Um, I reached out and emailed and called my county commissioner. Um, unfortunately, he's not here, but that's okay. Tyler, um, could I just interrupt there? I, I forgot to mention, uh, you do have on the introduction table out there uh, contact information on all of us, and we're public servants. We work for you. So avail yourselves of, of exactly what Tyler just mentioned in terms of uh, contacting us. I, I'm happy to talk to anybody by phone. I respond to emails as best I can, but thanks for bringing that up. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, you're fine. Um, the other thing, there was a study done by the DLR group and the Chin Study Group. Um, you can find this on the 12th floor of the Civic Center. Doesn't cost you a dime. It does cost us, and we're running out of them. It's also available electronically. It okay. doesn't cost us to keep printing more of these up. Right. Uh, I encourage you to read it, whether hard copy or electronic, whichever. Um, the one thing in here that is really nice, um, on page 91, um, it lists pros and cons of moving the center, or excuse me, of keeping the center at 42nd Woolworth. Um, listed here are eight pros. I'm not going to read them all off, but there's eight pros to keeping it where it is and not moving it. Um, the cons to keeping it down there, there's only three. I, I don't know about you, but if something has eight good reasons and only three bad reasons, it makes a little more sense to leave alone. Um, the other thing I have, um, HDR presented the plans for this on June 26th of 2018. Um, and the agreement with HDR for pre-designed services of the Potential Juvenile Justice Center facility was approved on October 3rd of 2017. Um, this project is moving fast, and it, it, it's, yeah, I think, I think the conductor of that train is, you know, long past pumping the brakes, and I think that we need to reevaluate that. Um, my other question is, if we're spending $120 million in tax dollars, why do we as taxpayers not get to vote yes or no? Um, so, um, me, I'm an American, it's my right to vote and I do it. Uh, so November is election time. Let's put it on the ballot, let's get a vote, yes or no. Construction for this, um, from what I've heard, um, is kind of slated for the September 9th time frame kind of, sort of. Um, why not just wait one more month 
and get a vote from the public. Um, the other uh, thing I've Can heard, I just stop you right there? I mean, okay. the, you raise a very valid point that needs more discussion. The Douglas County Bonding Authority that we, the county commissioners, control is AAA bonding uh, rating, the highest available, um, requires a vote of the people. The um, Building Commission's Bonding Authority, which is a AA bonding authority, lower bonding authority, therefore higher interest rates, does not. And so this is being put on the bonding authority of the Building Commission, which just used the $120 million number that HDR has proposed, will result in millions of dollars of extra payments to service the interest rates. I agree with you. I think a vote is not only right from a democratic point of view, but it's smart economically. We're like using the worst credit rating that we can get so that we get the highest interest rate that we can get, so that we can pay the most that we can get. So I just wanted to point that out as a, a, a valid point from a democratic let's vote point of view, but also smart economics. Right. Um, the other thing I've heard is that moving this downtown will decrease the length of incarceration because it's closer to the courthouse. Um, does anyone know exactly how much their incarceration length will decrease? I've never heard. Uh, I haven't seen any evidence at all that that's true. What it does decrease is the capacity for us to provide beds for kids. And it moves them into a city center block and a half from the correction center rather than a campus setting in Midtown. So, right. you know, the best practices that you talked about and what you pointed out in the Chin study, you know, is right on. The Chin study pretty forcefully said, do this in Midtown, do not do this downtown. Right. It's not good for the kids. Right. Um, there is no study that says transporting them uh, is traumatic. There's a lot of technology, and I've had discussions with the judiciary and the practicing bar on teleconferencing where you don't have to come downtown. You don't right. have to be in the same room. We already do this at the Douglas County Correction Center, right. and we could do it with our kids as well. Um, and where I saw that was in Omaha World, an Omaha World Herald article. Um, I believe it was dated for um, July 29th, I believe, um, but don't quote me on that. And I'm sorry, I've lengthened your testimony, but could you wrap it up? up? Yeah, we're, we're we'll do. Um, the other thing, I work in corrections. Um, corrections is a it's a difficult job. If anyone's worked in it, you know it. Um, Teleconferencing is, is the future of corrections. Um, it makes it safer for staff, makes it safer for the legal offenders, makes it safer for the public. Um, you know, in, in, in my experience, loading an inmate into a transport van and driving them through the streets of Omaha um, is not as safe as sitting them in a secure facility with a secure line to the courtroom that they can talk to each other, they can see each other, it, it works 10 times better. So in wrapping this up, because, you know, time is money, um, let's, st let's pump the brakes. Let's get a vote. Let's see what the public wants. You as commissioners, you, you, you serve the public. We voted you into office. We can just as easily vote you out of office. So let's put it on the ballot. Let's find out what the public wants and let's do what the public wants. Thank you. Thank you. I think we, be, we can do one more. But I'm serious, we, we do have a time constraint. So if there's somebody who can do it in 30 seconds or okay, a minute. It can be very, very brief, and I think he wants to say something too. Um, Marty Hosking, 7510 Cass. I'm involved in real estate in Omaha. Uh, my initial interest in the project, or I should say I woke from my civic slumber, uh, when I saw that a, a building would be seized by a public institution that run by my tax dollars and a private citizen would lose the right to use his property, then I saw a historic building possibly coming down. Then I saw potential growth of a residential area being uh, truncated by a dead block of uh, glass and steel, and we lose the history. So now I'm concerned about how the youth will be treated, and, and, I'm, and, and what I want to do is summarize this is that I'm concerned about the values, that I see really great values represented among those who have spoken. I hear democracy, I hear transparency, I hear child-centered values, poor conscious values, those who have less. 
uh, conscious of, of experts and listening to experts. The live, work, play dynamic that is the latest in smart development for cities across the country, except for many areas of Omaha. Uh, e economical, uh, e uh, good stewardship of our money. That's a, the values I'm hearing today from here. But what I'm seeing in this fast forward movement of the, of the commissioners and their people that working with them, private, private uh, entities, I hear bright, shiny object syndrome. I've had it. We've all had it. It's, it's, a, it's a risk. Uh, not smart plan, ad hoc planning, just whatever pops up. Uh, comfort and efficiency for functionaries, but not the people we're serving. Um, political expediency. And then something that's a little amorphous here, something to do with the, there's a corporate expediency here that has to do with corporate money, I think. And I, it smells funny to me. So that's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you. I want to, I'm sorry, we, we've got to move on. I, I appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. Uh, this has been great. We have another one scheduled for um, August 15th, uh, 2 p.m. in this building. And you can go online and get notice for that. And if you come to that, you'll be first up next time. I appreciate you uh, coming down. I'm just sorry we, we have one more thing that we must get done, and then we need to adjourn. Sorry. Uh, the... the uh, Public hearings on this are ongoing, so you get another uh, bite at the apple, and, and uh, we appreciate your involvement. Thank you all. Uh, we do have one public property update that we'll do real quickly here before. The August 15th? Yes. That's at 2 p.m., uh, and it's scheduled for room 903 in uh, Civic Center. Thank you. Commissioner Cavanaugh, if I may, since some people are leaving, just douglascountyclerk.org. Anything that's related to the Juvenile Justice Project is, there's a link towards the top of the homepage on douglascountyclerk.org that we have links to. Uh, we have again uh, Dave Peterson, Public Property Project Coordinator and the Douglas County Public Safety Bond Project Coordinator. Uh, we have the stakeholders in the project that he's going to address. Uh, County Treasurer John Ewing. Uh, I think we have emergency services, environmental services, 911, and corrections. So I know that uh, Director Foxall from Corrections must leave uh, because this is a <laughs> final county meeting in his distinguished 18 year career as Director of Douglas County Corrections. And I just wanted to say before he has to go to what I think is a retirement. Uh, ceremony. Thank you for uh, decades of great work. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I don't know if you'd like to say anything before you uh, yes, he would. He bow out. And, uh, <laughs> much of what we're going to hear about the corrections upgrade is uh, due to this, this man. You know what? There is no power, so I will be brief, but um, it's, it's been a, a great 18 years. We've done a lot of, of, of really uh, neat, innovative things at Corrections over, over, over my tenure, and uh, a lot of the, the, the responsibility for the things that we've accomplished in Corrections go to the wonderful staff that I have at the Department of Corrections. Also had the, the, the tremendous honor to work for a great county board, the county board that was forward-thinking in bringing, uh, or at least listening to my ideas, and then making them happen with the stroke of the pen. So I, I have to thank you guys for allowing us to do what we needed to do to make the Douglas County Department of Corrections a better place, not only for the staff, but for the inmate population as well. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Dave, we have the timeline of the... Um, Douglas County. I get corrections up first. Okay. Um, bottom line for everybody, this $45 million project is on time and on budget. On time and on budget. And county run. County run. Thank you. Give us the brief executive summary of this great work. We are uh, currently uh, state or phase two will be starting in September. Uh, we are going to start, we moved up a project, a roofing project that's going to get started 
in uh, mid-September, and will be some exterior work done on the outside of the building, some tuck pointing and uh, brick replacement and stuff uh, for that project. First mod shutdown for that project is scheduled for uh, October, and as with Dr. Fox saw on his way out, he's been great to work with down there, and he's been a big part of this. Um, it's going to all be timing because they are right now at capacity. And so shutting down mods is going to be, you know, obviously if we could shut down more at one time, it would be uh, more efficient down there. But we have to take it. You know, we have to take a mod as we can get them. So thank so you. First mod shutdown will be in October. Um, and we're looking at uh, 2020 completion uh, in the fall of 2020. On February that. of 20. 20 or for the west campus update yes west um, campus update that looks like it's majority complete at this point construction with 56 percent uh complete yes. um and um, on time and on budget on time and on budget i think you have another frame that shows i have that, another i can go to that one and that is right there there we go um we're going to have a hearing out there sometime in probably the next month or two to bring people up to speed on how great that project really is. This is a classic example of the county taking an existing structure, refurbishing it for a fraction of the cost that a new structure would uh, have required that we talked about at the head of this program. And so uh, we're doing this entire building, and you'll get us the square footage cost on that. Yes. Um, for uh, a fraction of what it would cost us to build a building similar to that. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Any questions? Uh, any comments? Treasurer? Sure. I'll be very brief. We're excited to be part of this project. As many of you may have heard, the Douglas County Treasurer's Office is contributing a significant amount of money to this project each year by being able to move from our 108th and Maple office to this campus, we will save the citizens of Douglas County over $100,000 a year in lease payments. We will also be able to add new services that will benefit the citizens of Douglas County by the time we move into this project. We hope to have a mobile app where the citizens of Douglas County will be able to utilize their cell phones to pay any bills that they have with the Douglas County Treasurer's Office. We also hope to have a queuing system in place throughout our entire footprint where people will be able to go online and utilize their cell phones to get their place in line, then be notified of their time to go into the Treasurer's Office and even if they walk into the treasurer's office, be able to get in line through that system and be able to sit down rather than stand in line like you currently do. So we believe it's a great opportunity for us to not only have a newer facility, but also to improve the level of service to the citizens of Douglas County. So we're excited about the project. Thank you, Mr. Ewing. Uh, and congratulations on uh, shepherding a successful taxpayer saving a project to a successful Absolutely. conclusion. Thank you. Um, anything that you'd like to add? Okay. Um, I'd like to thank our directors and staff who've taken time out of their schedules to join us today. Um, I know that you have not had much of a speaking role here today, but it's continuity that we were looking forward to, uh, and your day will come. So thank you for coming, and uh, we'll, see you, uh, we'll see you soon on a follow-up. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. We are um, adjourning until August 15th at 2 p.m. in this building in 903, where we'll discuss the Juvenile Justice Project some more. Thank you. Thanks.